Do you want to read the Bible more than you currently do? Do you want to better understand the Bible when you read it? And do you believe that reading the Bible will significantly impact your life? So if you answered yes to any of those questions, then I want to encourage you to join me on this course as I study God's Word, as we look into how to read the Bible and how to apply it to our lives. For a number of months now, the Lord has really been impressing on my heart to teach God's story. This is a course that I wrote a number of years ago and um, have recently been rewriting it. And the Lord for the last three months or so has been really impressing on my heart to, to teach this online, to do this on this channel. But then recently with the unfolding of events that's happening in the world, many people have asked me questions around the interpretation of Scripture and their understanding of Scripture. And so I've just been sort of impressed upon me even more by the Lord to to really teach this this course. It's a tool for interpreting and reading the Bible. It is one of many. I know there are many other tools like this. Um, maybe not exactly like this one, but there are many other tools for, for interpreting the Bible. And I don't suggest for one minute that this is the correct way or the best way, but it simply is a tool. And I believe it's a biblical tool. Um, it's not a man-made tool. It's really using some tools that the scriptures give us um, for how to read the Bible. And and so, yeah, it's called God's story. It's really God's story because the story is about him and the unfolding of world history under his authority and his command, his word. And um, it's about how to read and apply the message of the Bible to our lives and then in turn, hopefully, be able to teach others um, to do the same. The course consists of 10 chapters or 10 modules in which we look at 10 of the most significant points in the story, how they unfold. We don't cover all of scripture. Um, we look more at a, a big picture of the scriptures and try and see specifically through themes how the story, how the message is, um, is being revealed to us bit by bit, part by part, and how all of it ultimately points to and reveals Jesus Christ. And so over the next few weeks, I'll be releasing videos like these, probably about 30 minutes, maybe a little bit longer for certain videos, in which we're going to go part by part through this course. Um, you can join in with that. Um, I will put the um, the course materials in the description. There will be a link to the PDF. This is the old um, cover page of the course. I'll show you some of the pages now as we just um, sort of dip into it. Um, but you can follow along, you can download the PDF. What is always best to do with a course like this is to do the homework section because when we do the teaching together, um, you get so much more out of it when you've actually done the homework. It's not a lot of homework, but um, it really gets you engaging in the scripture with really simple questions that will draw the meaning and draw the, the narrative out um, as we engage with it. So for a start, you'll see in the description there is a PDF that is chapters, that's the introduction and chapter one, two and three. Um, I will be adding the other chapters as we go. I'm currently sort of been rewriting the course. So some of them are not fully finished in their rewritten form, um, but they will be up as we go through and I will have them up in time so that you have it ahead of time to be able to do um, the homework for that chapter. So in today's video, we're going to dive right in. I'm going to do a little bit of an introduction, show you the themes, and then um, set you up for the first module, which we will do next week. Let's begin here by looking at the scripture from Luke chapter 24 and from verse 44. It says, Jesus appearing to the disciples, and then he said to them, um, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses the law of Moses let's just write that the law the prophets and the Psalms concerning me so what is Jesus is saying is that these things are a fulfillment of what was written in the law the Torah the prophets and the writings of the Psalms that's the three different categories of the Hebrew Bible Jesus is saying all of these categories are are writing about him and then he opened their understanding that's the key word there is understanding jesus gives them understanding that they might comp they might comprehend the scriptures and he said to them thus it is written and thus it is necessary for the christ to suffer to rise from the dead the third day and that repentance and remission of sins be preached in his name to all nations beginning in jerusalem and you are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send you um, the promise of my Father upon you, which is the Holy Spirit. And he says, 
They must wait in the city of Jerusalem, but then when the power comes, they will preach beginning um, beginning in Jerusalem, but that's not the end of the point. That's not the end of the goal. The end is to go to all the nations to preach this message. And what is this message? This message is that Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of all of what the scriptures have taught from the very beginning. Remember when the early apostles began to go and teach, obviously that this didn't really happen until there was persecution in Jerusalem. They began to move out of Jerusalem due to persecution. And then really the missions journeys began through the apostle Paul and in his calling. But when the the Jewish apostles, when because they were Jews, they were not um, Christians as we think of Christians. They were Jews who had come to faith in Jesus as the Jewish Messiah. And when they began to preach, they began to travel both in um, among the Jewish people in the synagogues, and then Paul later began to really reach out to the Gentiles. But what did they teach from? They taught from the Old Testament scriptures. They didn't have a New Testament. The New Testament was written because of what they were doing. The, they didn't have other scriptures to teach from. They, when they taught Jesus, they taught him from the law, from the prophets, and from the Psalms. And they showed the people, as Jesus had shown them, as he had given them understanding, they showed them, the people, that Jesus is truly the fulfillment of all these things that God has promised and determined and planned from the very beginning. And so... This is a crucial part of this great commission is the declaring of this kingdom of God, the coming of the kingdom that has come in Christ as he is taught and that is now being proclaimed to all the nations. And so for us to be able to do that, we need to understand the scriptures. We need to have this understanding that Christ gave to his apostles. We need to have that same understanding. We need to be able to preach this apostolic doctrine as it were sorry and how do we preach that apostolic doctrine it's when we learn how to preach christ from all the scriptures of the bible when we begin to see how christ is the fulfillment of all of the promises all of the pictures all of the foreshadowings within the bible is all pointing to jesus and is fulfilled in and through jesus christ that is apostolic doctrine that's what the apostles preached and so that is what we want to learn to do we want to learn to get these tools biblical tools for how to do that so let's look quickly at the introduction of god's story and as i read through this hopefully um, it will also um begin to shape for you an understanding of what this course is about i'm going to try and run through it very quickly try and maybe go and read it again but i want to also say as we go through scriptures like this this is i'm doing this very briefly now just as introduction but please feel free to post questions in the comments um maybe as we go along through this i might um specifically upload these at a particular time and i will be in the chat as well and try and answer questions in the chat live or otherwise i will um I will answer them in the next video or or if it's much later, I'll try and answer them in the actual comment section. So let's go to the introduction. And again, I'll say this is all in the PDF that you have received there that you can download. So um, you can follow along with me. Here we go. So Jesus says in Mark chapter 1, verse 15, as he begins his ministry, what does he say? The time is fulfilled. It's exactly what he said to them at the end of his ministry. This is the beginning of his ministry. He says, the time is fulfilled. What time? Now, when we speak about the time being fulfilled, it already is an indication that this is not an isolated incident. This is not something that stands alone. This is the fulfillment of God's purposes. And what is this purpose? The kingdom of God, which is really speaking, is the rule and the reign of God in heaven. But this rule and reign which is in heaven is now coming at hand. It is now coming to earth. There is now a shift in that which God has purposed for his kingdom to be demonstrated. It is now going to be demonstrated here on the earth. And how does it come? How does the kingdom manifest? It begins with repentance and and then faith. Repentance from unbelief. Repentance from not not believing in God. Not believing in Jesus to faith in Jesus and faith specifically in this, I'll just 
circle it, this good news. What is this good news? The good news of the kingdom of God. That's the message that Jesus preached. And so Jesus himself sees his um, purpose. He sees his message. He sees um, this gospel as a fulfillment of the kingdom of God. So let me speak about that for a minute. I'm going to just read um, this and then I will kind of try and clarify or, or bring perspective here. So mes- the message Jesus preached, embodied and demonstrated was not something new. It was the fulfillment of God's plan from the beginning. To put it another way, Jesus' own identity, his mission, so that's his identity, his mission, and his message, all came directly from the revealed will of God in his word. So at his birth, and as a young boy growing up, I don't believe, I don't believe, I'm not saying this is an official doctrine that you have to hold to, but I don't believe Jesus was fully away, didn't fully know his full identity, especially as a baby, as a boy growing, it says he grew in stature. I don't think he was fully aware of really who he was, because remember, he came in the flesh as a man, he came as a, as a real person. Yes, he was fully God, but he laid some of that down to come as a person, and I don't believe as a young boy he would have been fully aware of who he was. However, as by the Spirit being in him, as by the Spirit being in him, as he studied the Old Testament scriptures and internalized them and became convinced by them of his identity and mandate. So I believe as Jesus began to engage the scriptures, he became more and more convinced of what the Spirit inside of him was telling him who he is, but he became convinced of them from the scriptures. And when his ministry began, his preaching, healing, and living was not an attempt to obey. And I'm not saying that faith and obedience aren't linked to one another. They are. But it wasn't an an attempt to obey the word. It was the word flowing out of him. And the the Bible confirms this. The word, the, the scriptures, it tells us that Jesus is the word become flesh. So he literally embodied the word. So his true identity, which is his true identity as one with the Father and the Spirit. And how did Jesus become fully convinced of this this eternal identity, of his eternal nature, of this word become flesh? How did that begin to flow out of him? It was through the scriptures. And so in the same way, how we understand the Bible's message and what it means for us to be in Christ will determine our identity and trans and sorry how our sorry I must read my own notes how our identity is transformed into his image we are being transformed into the image of Christ and how do we get transformed it is by the spirit working with the word the word of god the scriptures of the old and the new testament of the whole bible as a whole message pointing to Christ as we as we eat the scriptures and as the spirit within us digests the scriptures, he transforms us into his image. And we don't, I'm not saying we do this just in isolation. This happens within the context of fellowship. But first, we must learn to read the whole Bible through the lens of Jesus Christ. We must put on Christ. We must have the mind of Christ and be taught by Christ. These are all things we do have as Christians, but we must learn to walk in them to understand how all the scriptures point to Jesus and his kingdom. And that is what we want to do. So this course is designed as a Bible study tool to help participants learn to read and apply the message of the Bible to their lives and in turn teach others to do the same. That's what it is. It's a simple tool. You'll see the tool, how it works is really just drawing from the scriptures and using that, using the themes from the Bible using um, the lens of Jesus continuously to train us to read the Bible in this way. Each chapter will consist of four parts. The first is discover the story um, in which we read the text and answer some simple questions. This is the homework part usually. These questions are simple. Sometimes the text is short. Sometimes the text is a little bit longer depending on the part we are focusing on. And this is the part where really, if you're going to do this course, I want to encourage you that you must do this before you come to the teaching session, because you will not get probably 50%, you will not even get 30% of what is being taught unless you've actually been in the scripture yourself, read them and answered these simple questions. And they're simple, but they also teach us how to ask good questions of the Bible so that the Bible can actually ask good questions of us because when we ask these kinds of questions these simple questions 
where the Bible actually begins to interpret us and our lives. And so that is even a technique to learn as we go through the course. Then we will do follow the themes, and I'll explain the themes in a minute. Um, we see how our three themes develop at each stage in the story. And then in see the big picture, we visualize. Very important to actually have a visual representation of what it is we're speaking about, because that is something that's lasting in our minds. And then lastly, and probably most importantly, we make it count, we apply Jesus, the word, to our lives. We don't just have head knowledge, we actually apply it to us and allow him to shape and change and transform us. We believe that as you go on this journey with us, that the good news about the kingdom of Jesus Christ will radically transform you and establish you in God's ordained purpose. That is my belief. And I, I've never seen us studying the word of God that doesn't produce this in people's lives when we do this seriously. So let's quickly look at the themes of God's story. Now you will see as we begin this journey that these three themes are drawn directly out of the text and not something we're imposing on the text, but I just wanted to um, introduce them to you. Um, there's a gentleman, gentleman by the name of Graham Goldsworthy who writes an incredible book called According to Plan, and he describes the the message of the Bible of the kingdom of God under these three headings. He talks about God's people, God's place, and then he talks about God's rule which is obviously a kingdom language. And I just change that to purpose because it's a little bit easier for people to get hold of. And so the Bible is a collection of books with many authors and genres and its sheer volume of detail can feel overwhelming. So to help us navigate the story, we track three central themes of God's kingdom message and they give us a framework. And the themes are simply God's people. This is a theme that follows the people whom God created to represent his image on the earth. It deals with our identity, relationship with God, and with each other and um, the rest of creation. Then God's place. This theme deals with the physical place that God gives his people to live, to work, and to worship. In this place, God is with them, and he blesses them and provides for them. And then there's God's purpose, the theme of God's purpose. This theme looks at the mandates and instructions that God gives to his people so that they can walk in their calling and work out his kingdom into the world around them. And you'll notice that these purposes stand apart from relationship with God. We are, we are brought into a relationship with God by grace, by faith. You'll see that throughout the story. And then we are given a purpose and a mandate. So these three themes are really important and they also help us um, anchor ourselves in any part of the story. If you learn this over time, it'll be really handy for you to just, wherever you are in the scripture, you can ask, who are the people? It's a simple question. You can ask, where is the place? Where are the people situated? What is this place at this po moment in the story? And then what is God's instruction to the people? What is his mandate or instruction to the people in general or to the person? Often it's a character, a particular person who God is um, busy ministering in and through and what are the instructions that God gives um, to that person? Now, lastly here, I want to just look at the concept of Jesus as our lens. We don't have time to go into this in detail, but it is really good to set this up for us as we begin this journey um, in God's story. So, Using this little picture, it's sort of just a little diagram to help us visualize this, but there are many things that we could um, think of that influence the way that we read the scripture. So, I mean, I would usually, if I was teaching this, I would ask participants to give me the answers, but um, I can't do that at the moment. So let's just think of a few of them. There's things like our culture. There's things like the theology we have already learned. Uh, there are things like our family or family background, um, upbringing is connected to that, but it can be separate. Um, there are things like um, our experiences. There are things like our worldview, um, how we um, see the world, and that can be connected to our beliefs. Um, we can have different kinds of beliefs about the world, and all of these things will have an influence on how we read the scriptures. If we put um, the Bible sort of as a little book in the middle here and we're trying to read the Bible, um, we're trying to make sense of it, all of these different things influence how we are reading the Bible. And And the, the key thing about reading the Bible is that we want to, um, as we read it, we want to get to the heart of the story. We want to understand 
what is God's heart in the story. We want to not just get caught up in detail or get sidetracked. I mean, many of the false theologies that exist in the world, they're not based on something outside of Scripture. They are Scriptures that are taken out of its its context, its proper context. And often that proper context is the overall teaching of Scripture. And that's where people miss the heart of God. They miss what it is that God is actually saying and doing in the context of the whole story. And they hone in on one particular thing and they focus on that thing and they emphasize it and they pull it out of its context in that way. And so how do we, how do we put aside all these things? Well, I want to say to you, it's probably impossible for us to put them aside completely. It's impossible for me to just say, I'm going to just ignore my culture, ignore the previous theology, ignore my experiences, ignore worldviews and beliefs, family background. I'm going to just try and ignore all of these things and, and just read the Bible without them. The reality is all of us are still in a process a process of the renewing of the mind. Um, that's all of us. And we are not, um, it's not a finished work in us. So these things can influence our thinking and can influence our reading of the Bible. All of us, all the time. So that is where this tool becomes really, really helpful. And that is to learn to make Jesus our lens. So to to make Jesus the lens through which we read the scripture all the time and bring it back to who he is, what he has revealed. Because the Bible tells us that he is the ultimate revelation of God's heart. He is the ultimate revelation of the word. He is the ultimate revelation of God's will. So all of these things, the word, the will of God, the heart of God, um, God's intention is another word we can use. All of these things are ultimately revealed in Christ. So when we learn to do this, we can see all of the scripture through this lens and we can see how it points to and connects to Jesus. And it helps us to for our minds to be renewed by the word and for these other things not to cloud our judgment or our reading of scripture. So we're going to stop there for an introduction, but if you um, want to begin this journey with me, then I want to encourage you to download the PDF and begin by doing the the Discover the Story of Chapter 1, of of Module 1 or Chapter 1. This is what it looks like, Discover the Story. It's very simple. You read Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, um, to chapter 2, verse 25, and you answer those nine. Um, They're very simple questions. Um, you, You find the answers to the questions in the text. This is not for you to go and try and figure out the answer. You don't have to think of the answer. The answers are all in the text. And I've even helped you there by showing you, if you if you look carefully, um, I don't know what's happening here. If you look carefully, there's a little indication there of where each of those um, um, questions, there we go, it even tells us there, it gives you this, the specific scriptures to go and look at. So you, you read the whole thing and you want to read it maybe twice and you try and answer the question, Um, by remembering the scripture but if you can't remember then you go back to that reference and the answer is in that reference the point of this is not for you to come up with answers the point is to learn to draw the answers out of the bible text so if you're going to join us go and do that this week i will upload the next video probably hopefully next week i'm not sure when i'm uploading this one but it'll probably be the same day most likely a thursday And then we will join in this journey of discovering the word and discovering Jesus through the text. And it's really exciting. I always enjoy teaching this. And I always, my faith always grows so much when I teach this. Because again, I just see Jesus as center to everything in my life. And I want to encourage you to experience the same. So I will see you guys next week. Have a great week and go and do your homework.